Hello everyone, GamingDad56. Uh, I wanted to start a new series. Uh, I notice as I'm watching other YouTube videos and reading through the comments and things, on a lot of series that YouTubers do, people are always asking for mod lists. And then I also notice that, well, number one, there are tons of mods for Farming Simulator. Um, and from my own experience, it can be a little intimidating trying to choose which mods you want to play with. And it's very easy to settle into a specific mod list. Like, this is what I have, this is what I like to play with, and largely that's because I get comfortable with those specific mods. I know what they do, I know how to use them, etc., etc., and it, it, it makes it easy. But once I get to that point, I find myself reluctant to download other mods. And largely, this, is, this pertains most to mods that change the gameplay in, in some way. I'm not just talking about, like, new tractors or things like that. Because those, you know, you can pretty much download those at any time and they don't drastically change your game. But mods that do change the game or you kind of have to know how to use a little bit more to get the most out of it and that's what i kind of want to go through in this series this is not really telling you uh how to use these mods or teaching you necessarily about them but just going through the list of mods that i currently play with uh showing them off to you guys showing you a little bit about them at least so you maybe can can download them and feel comfortable using them in your own games uh, but these are not really meant to be how to's about about the mods for that you know i would have to learn the mods much better before i i feel like i could teach them to you guys so we'll showcase some of the mods we'll talk about them the ones that do change gameplay or you know you need to know how to use a little bit we'll try to go through the through those a bit so uh, that's kind of what i want to do and to start off with, the very first mod in my mod list and episode one of this series is going to cover the AGI pack. So let me hop into here and go into mods and DLCs. And right here we have the AGI pack. This is a mod from Giants. So it's a pretty good one. This is all the stuff that it includes. And we'll take a look at some of this as far as equipment that you can buy in the store, but the most, the more um, notable equipment, I guess, is actually in the construction menu. Uh, so let's go take a look at that. We hop into construction. Much of what is in the AGI pack is going to come under the silos category, but there is one building here in the sheds category. A nice, uh, rectangular shed. It has a garage door opening on this side, two more garage doors on on this long side, and then a small, you know, uh, quote unquote human door uh, on the other short side. So a nice shed to be able to use. I'll go ahead and plop this down and we'll go take a look at it in person. Um, let's see. I always like to have snapping on when I'm trying to build something, and hopefully it's level with the yard. Nope. Whatever. Ah, the build mode in Farming Simulator. It could be so much better. Anyway, so here's a little uh, man door, human door. Okay. You can walk in through this, although I find, for whatever reason, you tend to get stuck. Big garage door here. Uh, I believe... You can turn the lights on and off. Yep, there we go. Two more garage doors over here. And then finally, another uh, human-sized door over here with another light switch. Does this one also work? or uh, It doesn't look like this one works. Closed door. Ah, oh, there we go. Turn on shed lights. There we go. So you got a light switch here, a light switch over there, and then you have your doors here. Very cool. It's a nice shed. And I think a, a good addition to the game. 
So back into the construction menu, what else do we have from the AGI pack? Well, as I said, most of what it offers is going to come under the silos category. If we scroll all the way to the end, we see these various silos. And I'm actually going to just go place all of them down so we can take a look at them. There's one, two, three, and finally, whoa, here we go. We'll put this one this way. Okay, so we have, while we're in here, a white smooth wall bin, okay? This holds crops, you know, grain type crops. Um, but in the notes, worth noting here, you need an auger or conveyor for this silo to work, okay? Same thing here for the hopper bin. It's, it's, it's basically the same thing. It just looks a little different. Uh, the flat bottom bin is a really big version of this. But again, you still need augers or conveyors to make this work. Here we have 76,000 liters of storage. And I believe, we'll check this out, but I believe that storage is limited to one crop type. Uh, the hopper bin and the the flat bottom bin would also be the same. They just increase your storage a bit. 125,000 for the hopper bin and 500,000 for the flat bottom bin. But I want to go check out some of the originals. So these are kind of some of your original uh, crop storage solutions from the base game. You have these big, what I call elevator storage systems, kind of like that this one over here where you get a trigger to dump into and also get your stuff out of you do not have to use conveyors to make these work but you also have these big big ones here that do need conveyors so similar stuff to what we see in the game in the base game but just some different sizes and you know a different company, different looks. This one at half a million liters for $42,000 is is pretty good. You know, here you get roughly a million liters for $72,000. So I, I feel like the prices are on par. Okay. And finally, the big guy, this holds 5 million liters of crops. And I believe you can put multiple crop types in that one. So we will definitely check that out. That is comparable to something like this, but much, much bigger. Obviously, these are 400,000 up to about 800,000. Um, that the, the one I put down from AGI holds 5 million. You know, similar to what we're seeing with some of these really big storage solutions. But it's actually a little bit smaller. It doesn't take up quite so much room. So let's get out of the build menu and let's go look at these. Also, I'll have to get a, uh, a vehicle so we can, we can make them work. We also need to go ahead and buy... Uh, some of the augers and conveyors to make them work. So here you have the smooth wall bin. Yep, looks nice. You can, when you go up to this, I think, open the top. There we go. Open cover. So you hit that. And what happens, if we can see it, uh, just put on this real quick that little hatch up there at the top opens. We'll test this out, but I'm pretty sure you actually have to do that in order to make these work. If you do not do that, uh, you cannot load stuff into them. So this is the, what's it call this one? The hopper bin, very similar to the smooth wall bin, but just uh, a little different. Again, you can open the cover up there. And then this is the big guy as far as these go. Again, open cover. And then you have these little symbols. These are where you are going to uh, unload the grain from. So let's go ahead. I'll get out of here real quick. I'll come back when we have some augers set up for these to work with. All right, here are the different auger slash conveyor belt systems. I'm gonna go into the store and show you some of these because I find the descriptions quite interesting. Uh, so we'll just go ahead in here. 
the uh, that's not the order they show up in. Let's go back into here. So they show up in the in the same order. Here it just says conveyor is mainly used to empty your silos. Now this is somewhat important because this particular one and some of the others they don't raise up very high. They actually don't go nearly high enough to load grain into those silos. They are used to get grain out of the silos. Okay, so showing this this off here, this is that first one that I was talking about, and you can see it is quite a bit smaller than something like this big one here. So the smaller ones tend to be used for getting grain out of silos, where the bigger ones tend to be used to put it in silos. Again, here we have a conveyor belt uh, made primarily for loading it into or getting it out of silos. Okay, um, this one, the first one here, the STX squared, uh, is actually intended for loading into the silos. And it tells you here, the compatible silos are the AGI West Steel smooth wall bin and the hopper bin. So those are the two smaller ones. And we go this one here again, it's primarily used for emptying silos. And then finally the big, big one, which is used to fill up your silos. Okay. So I'm going to take those back to the farm and we'll take a look at them. All right. So I have this set up, so hopefully we can demonstrate some of this. Now, four out of the five of these things, I believe all four out of five, you can get into. Uh, that, that's, that's the tractor. So if you go up to these, hit E, just like you would normally get in a vehicle, you can hop right into them. And then if you're on the computer, mouse controls, if you're on a console of some sort, I have no idea what the controls are because I don't, I don't play on console, you can control the the height of it and you can also drive the thing now generally the controls are backwards i find so i'm actually going in reverse right now uh, these are also difficult to drive i'm not gonna lie you have a little steering wheel at the back and it is very finicky but what you're trying to do basically is get the uh, spout there at the top over or near the hole and then we should, whoops, go back in. Ah, stop it. Should, third time's a charm. Should be able to turn this on. And hopefully it will stay on. If not, we'll have to go adjust the settings. Uh, and we'll see how that works. These, you do have to get these positioned correctly, but once you do, you can basically just bring your trailer right up to it. And start, uh, start dumping whatever, whatever grain it is you have into the silo. There we go. So we start overloading. Okay. It starts putting it in. It all went into this thing, but it didn't go anywhere. Wrong one, again. So it's kind of sitting in here right now in an invisible hopper. So we're going to try, there. There it started unloading, okay? And if we go into here, we can see that this now has almost 2000 liters of wheat in it. So hop back in the tractor we'll probably have to back ourselves up a little bit again maybe like i said these can be a little finicky uh, but it is an interesting way to uh change the way that you play the game a little bit so while that's unloading okay here settings Automatic engine start is off. Start the engine. Unload. Keep unloading. There we go. And here we go. So you can see it unloading from the trailer and unloading into here. Ideally, this would... You basically just turn this thing on. 
turn the conveyor on and let it go. If you have automatic engine start off, you can do this and it should just keep going. The problem is the trailer dumps into the thing. It fills up the game's little internal hopper or internal capacity that it feels like this auger has. And then it stops. So you have to constantly keep hitting the, the unload button here. But you get the idea. This allows you, and this is the STX squared 10-51 that allows you to easily load into the smooth wall bin. It will also allow you to load into this bin. And, and, and exactly in the same way. So what I want to do here finally is test close the cover on this and now see if it will let me do it so unload and we'll see if it puts it in the bin uh it looks like it is putting it in the bin so i guess maybe the covers don't actually uh make a gameplay difference but they're more just visual but still it's there now from there, now that we've put our wheat in there, we want to be able to, or at some point, we will want to be able to get it back out. And that is where these other conveyor systems come in. And you can see the sort of unload icon. Again, you can drive these things and try to get the uh, I don't I don't really know what to call it the end the receptacle end up here under the hopper Make sure it's high enough that you can reach into your trailer And then we should be able to drive our trailer under it Get out of first-person view here. Sorry it's still in reverse Turn it around Let's see if this works Nope. All right. Uh, do we need to be in a different place? There we go. R, start filling. So once you get it kind of under there where it needs to be, which is probably somewhere around where that icon is, you can hit R, choose what you want to do and it is filling and again all of that right now is going into the augers internal capacity that the game recognizes now I get my trailer under there and it should start putting it in now that I have everything lined up finally we should be able to start filling and it just immediately starts filling it into the trailer okay I'm going to stop filling so that there is still some wheat in here and we will test out whether the bins can hold more than one crop type. This is something personally that I actually like about some silos. They limit the, the number of grain types that you can hold. And that is, that's pretty realistic. In a bin like this, there, there's no internal divisions inside that bin. So anything you put in there is going to get all mixed up in one, one group. So you only put one crop type in there. Uh, let's see. There we go. If we hit I. Nothing. Oh, maybe we were out of the trigger. Where is it? Very touchy today, apparently. Let's try again. We'll get a little more straight on. There. Oh, wait. I see a problem. We are no longer anywhere near lined up on the top of this thing. 
do this the easy way. Okay. There we go. So it looks like it is allowing us to put multiple crop types in there. So uh, that is something you can do, I guess. I thought they were limited. I was wrong. They are not. So live and learn. This bin here, the hopper bin, is going to work and function exactly like that bin does. I put this auger under it to kind of show uh, that off, but it works exactly as we did with the other bin. Now, this bin is a little different. It is much bigger, much wider, which means that that 10-51 auger that we were using will not work for this bin. Or it might, but it's much more difficult. And this auger is actually one that you cannot drive directly. This one you have to hook up to a tractor. And actually you have to keep it hooked up to a tractor in order to be able to use it. So we're going to need to get another tractor. Uh, okay, while we are getting set up, we unfold the conveyor belt. There we go. Is it unfolded there? And then once you do that, you have the ability to raise it and of course lower it, but also to swing the uh, receptacle end, the, the, the trigger basically to load it, you have the ability to move that as well. So let's try to get this thing positioned over the hole at the top of this bin. This is, honestly, I find it easier than the ones that drive themselves, but it's still not completely the easiest thing because uh, the the end of this auger is so far away from your tractor. Uh, little steering inputs make quite a big difference. Okay, so we'll, we'll have that running. Conveyor belt unload here. I think it's on. I don't see a way to turn it on, so it should be good. I'm going to go buy another tractor and I'll be right back. Okay, I bought us another tractor. I bought a different kind this time just so we can, I don't know, tell them apart because it probably won't make any difference. Hook up to our trailer and we'll go see if we can unload into this big bin. Nothing yet. There we go. I start overloading and look at that, putting it right into the bin. Perfect. This is where the grain door on these trailers actually comes in quite handy because it slows down the rate at which the trailer is dumping grain into the auger and it doesn't fill up the auger's internal capacity and then make the trailer go back down. So, a use for the grain door on these trailers, which you otherwise never ever do anything with. So there we go, we're filling up this flat bottom bin uh, with our barley. It's perfect, so that's all three of those bins that require augers in order to use, and that's how they function. Very simple. To get your grain back out of this one, and also to show off this final auger that we haven't quite seen yet, this one has a, there we go, raise it up so we can get under it. And it has that uh, little loading area right there at the end. So we're, that's what we're going to want to get under that, which means this is probably not the most ideal uh, auger to be trying to use on this bin. One of the other ones, like that Batco, uh, orange one over there, would probably be better. I don't know if that's actually a Batco. I always assume orange with Batco, or associate the orange with Batco. What's it say? Yes, it is a Batco. So if we put this here, that should work. 
but I just noticed, and this is what I want to do with this series, guys. I am not an expert on these mods. I use these mods, but there's stuff about them even I don't know, and I want to learn, and I want you guys to learn alongside me, and also teach me, because you guys probably know, some of you know more about this than I do. So this can be a great opportunity for all of us to learn about these mods. Let's see. I think it can't go anywhere, can it? This way. Ah, there we go. Okay. This one has a fill capacity. Did any of the others have a fill capacity? No. And no. So this one is interestingly showing us a, an icon. And I remember seeing this in the store right now. So let's go look in the store again under the AGI pack. That's this guy. Conveyor belts are an alternative way to load your trailers. This conveyor is able to produce seeds directly from your grain storage. Okay, that is a bit different. Hence why it's called the seed treater. Maybe I should look at the names once in a while. So here we have a seed treating liquid. Okay, so let's take some grain out. Can we just use this to take grain out? Let's find out together. Our trailer is empty. We have however many liters of grain this trailer held. I think it's like 22,500 or something of barley in this bin. So let's see, can we unload? Well, it's not doing anything at the moment. R doesn't do anything. So, are we not positioned correctly? Or does this thing only produce seeds? I have honestly never used this thing. Not one time. Alright, I still do not see. Let's move our trailer a little bit. Make sure we're not missing. There we go. I still do not see an option to start unloading. So let's go buy some uh, seed treating liquid and bring it back and see if that does the trick. I'll be right back. Okay, we're back with the seed treating liquid. So let's uh, put it over here. Is it, is it filling up? It is. It's filling up the thing. Okay. If I set it down, will it continue? Yes, it will. Cool. So we're filling up with seed treating liquid, and now what can we do? Okay. Let's move that now. Out of our way. Still no option. that I can see to do anything. Hmm. Well, let me play around with this for a minute and see what we can do. Okay, apparently I just was not in the trigger because now it's it says start filling. It just needs to be more under there. Now I'm very curious as to whether I was just doing it wrong in the first place. Can this thing actually unload seeds or uh, grain directly? Wheat, barley, unload. Yes, it can. Okay, so user error on my part. I was just doing it incorrectly. So if you get it positioned correctly, this thing can just unload the silo for you which is what we did there okay we'll empty out this trailer now uh good nothing in there and put seed treating liquid back in this guy fill it come on there we go and hmm What is happening?
There we go. Just got to get it in the right spot. Start filling. Barley again. What does it do? Now that is seeds. That is seeds for sure. Yes. So now using the seed treating liquid and this auger, instead of getting barley out, we are getting seeds. So this is an interesting way to produce seeds without having to buy them. And I'm going to stop it here at about a thousand. Let's see. Whoa, what? Stop. No, stop unloading. Oh, I'm in the wrong thing. Duh. Okay, stop unloading. Now I can't see how full this is. Well, we'll just go with it. Whatever. Stop overloading. There. Stop overloading. Yeah, apparently I can't stop it until it's actually done. <laughs> let's let's drive forward slightly. So it'll have to stop. Oh no, I'm stuck. Move. Okay, so in doing that, we used about 22, 21 liters of the seed treating liquid. We were able to get 20... 600 liters of seeds. So I'm sorry about that. 2,600 liters of seeds and about 22 liters of the seed treating liquid. So it looks like it's about one liter of seed treating liquid to a thousand liters of seeds, roughly. Now, what was the price of the seed treating liquid? See, this is very interesting. $3,000 for 280 liters, which would, in theory, do about 280,000 liters of seeds. So that's pretty good. So depending on what crop type you are using, you may be able to produce seeds cheaper this way than you can buy them directly from the store. And finally, let's go ahead and empty this guy out. I don't, there's probably not a reason I really need to, to show this off, but we will anyway. We'll go check out the big AGI silos. This one works like, you know, any of the big silos in the base game do. You drive over the trigger and you can unload your grain right here into the trigger. Very easy. Um, once that's done, we'll check to make sure, but I think you can load your trailer back up. Oh, wait, hold on. Can we stop that? Big door please. No, it didn't do it. Come on. Get back down so I can change what I'm tipping from. There we go. Okay. At full speed, please. So, we'll check to make sure we can unload, or we can load our trailer back up from there, but you also have this here, which is uh, you can put one of those augers under there and unload that way as well. So it kind of gives you an option. Because I believe it is optional. You can load from here, I'm pretty sure. Maybe not. Oh yeah, there we go, start filling. So yes, you can unload from here as normal for these type of silos, but you can also stick an auger there and unload that way as well and the other cool thing I'll just get him out of the way is that it has this door on it that closes and you can drive right over this I think that's really cool compare that to a base game silo like this and your options are basically to load into here and also unload from here uh, and that's it you don't there is no place to stick an auger to unload with this bit you just have that one option and there's no cool door on here either so i think those are pretty cool anyway that's the agi pack guys and the first mod that is in my mods folder that i play around with a lot uh this silo i find pretty cool mainly because it stores lots and lots of grain but these ones actually offer a somewhat different way to play the game where you're using augers to load and unload the bins. It's just a different way of playing. So that's the AGI mod. If you guys know anything about this mod that I got wrong 
or you know more about it, stuff I didn't talk about or whatever, please post it in the comments and let us know so that we can all learn from these videos together. Thank you, and I'll see you next time when we cover our next mod.